What's going on everybody? Welcome to the final session of uh, Photoshop for web developers. Um, this is take 20 I think. Who knows? But um, anyway, it's late, I'm tired, and so let's dive right in and uh, figure out how to save images for websites. Um, so we're going to jump into our Photoshop file real fast. Um, I've pre Cre I've created a few slices just to speed this up already. Um, now the original, the typical way to save out of Photoshop is just go up to File, Save As. You're going to get a dialog where you can just select PSD or you can select JPEG. Now if you just save like this, it's going to just create one giant Photoshop file or uh, JPEG file that doesn't really do you any good. Um, it's not going to export your um, any of your slices. Um, if you crop something, this would be a useful dialog. But saving out of this dialog is not the same as saving for the web. Photoshop will try to optimize it and uh, and work its magic on it as it would for pictures to get you the best quality out of that. Not exactly what we're wanting uh, for web. Uh, we want we want all of our uh, colors to stay what they are. Um, and so what we typically use uh, is Control alt shift s and it's going to bring up a dialog called save for web now uh, by default this is going to um, show us all of our slices and so just real quickly what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, click and uh, shift click on each one of our slices and uh, up here on the top right hand side we're provided a drop down box to, sh to select what we actually want to save these as. And so under the JPEG option we're, we, uh, we're shown um, a quality slider and so it starts at 100 um, and it's essentially a 0 to 100% um, quality range. A lot of the times I set mine between 60 and 70 um, just so the images are nice and small um, in file size. Um, for instance, right here, if we look um, down at the bottom left hand side of the screen uh, that was shown, uh, it looks like the size of this is going to be around uh, 30k, which is great. Um, if we scale it all the way up, it's going to be close to 70, uh, 73k. And so um, this is just something to play with. Um, uh, sometimes saving it at a uh, at a higher quality doesn't do you any better than a lower quality so I'm just going to go ahead and save one under 35 percent now it's gonna pull up a dialog box where you can set your options um, uh, in the very bottom dialog there is a slices um, drop down I'm going to do all selected slices. This is only going to save the slices that we manually uh, selected. Create a new folder, uh, load JPEG. Now I'm going to click save. And so we're going to take a quick look at what we saved. So if we actually scroll in and look at it, it's extremely pixelated. Um, which is kind of expected. Um, if we have it at 100%, you don't really see that pixelation a whole lot. This could be considered acceptable. Uh, each image is between 4 and 5K, which is spectacular uh, for, for web performance. Uh, if we go in and save um, at 100%, selected slices, file directory, create a new one called high. Save into it. Oh, I only had one uh, image selected. Scroll in and you see that we have a very consistent uh, colored icon. Now you may be looking at this and going, well, you have the background around the circle. That doesn't do me any good because I need transparency. Well, it's pretty easy to do. To get transparency in an image, we need to save it as a PNG. Um, PNGs sometimes can be a lot heavier in file size, um, but that's just one of the trade-offs. There are a lot of image optimization tools that will allow us to compress that, um, but are typically outside of Photoshop. 
And so inside of Photoshop um, to um, be able to get transparency in it, we need to hide that background layer. Now this isn't always something easy to do. Um, you can take your, uh, your move tool, select the background layer and close it, but then find out there's another background layer and then close it. Um, and rinse and repeat until you work through all the different background layers. Now there's a really easy way to show and hide all layers um, that aren't selected. And so um, in our um, inside of our layers, I'm going to just quickly go through and try and find um, the parent most um, folder, which is this featured. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold up this right, I'm going to hold alt and click the click the eye. Now what that's going to do it's going to hide all layers except the layer I've selected. Now be careful when doing this because if you execute any actions it's going to forget you did that and it's going to be hard to get back and show all those layers. And so what I'll typically do is I'll create my slices and when I get ready to save them I'll hide all the layers. Quickly go in control alt shift s select PNG under my image tool um, gonna, and we're going to manually go in and select our four images and select PNG again the way we get the transparency and um, interlace don't really think it matters maps irrelevant I'm going to click save go up and PNG let's create a PNG folder and click save and let's see what we have. Let's see what uh, size of images we have. So, oh, I, I must have had something uh, extra inside of my dialog because it saved extra slices. Um, I may have had those selected too, so my bad. Um, looks like our image size is about 10K, which is actually better than our JPEGs. Open it up, scroll in and, and look, and we have nice, clean um consistent color in our uh, inside of our image. Some instances a PNG is going to work great, other instances it's going to be extremely heavy. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's a, that's a quick way to uh, be able to extract um, some images outside of, um, outside of Photoshop. Um, let's see if I can quickly uh, find uh, So we have a tool here called uh, Tiny PNG. Let's see what we can get out of um, this 24-hour icon. It's currently 10.3 um, K. I'm going to drag and drop it, which is extremely handy for HTML5. Um, and it looks like it saved us uh, 3K. I'm sorry, it, it compressed it down to 3K. Um, let's go back to our desktop or inside of a new folder, uh, PNG save it there. So if we open up this one and open up this one and actually zoom in quite a bit you'll see that to the naked eye they look pretty much exactly the same. What's happened behind the scenes is um, the tiny PNG has gone through and compressed um, some of the information around um, the uh, the transparency on the PNG. Transparency is surprisingly expensive for a PNG. Um, there's a lot of tools um, to automate that. Uh, look into Grunt um, and Bower, uh, some of the, the Node Package Manager uh, task runners for that. Um, and let's see here, what else do we have? So, hmm, that looks like all we have. Um, Feel free to hit me up with any questions on Twitter. Um, my Twitter handle is WorthyD. Uh, leave a comment if you have any questions or if there's something you want to see. Um, I, am, I have a couple more video series in the works. Um, a lot of stuff's been going on, and sometimes it's just hard to kind of sit down and get these videos worked out. Um, really appreciate the views. Um, like I said earlier, give me some feedback. Uh, let me know what you guys want to see, and I'll do my best to, to get you guys the material. So. Um, as always, appreciate it, and we'll see you on the next one.